subscribe and click the bell icon for the latest updates and notifications from the Indian Express. Hello and welcome. You are watching Indian Express interviews. It's been almost 30 years since the mass exodus of Kashmiri Pandits happened in the valley. And it took almost the same number of years for the Hindi film industry to tell the story of the pain, the agony, the brutality. Vidhu Vidhu Vinod Chopra, one of the finest filmmakers of the Indian film industry, has made a film called Shikara. But with me right now is the man behind the script of that film, Rahul Pandita. Rahul, you wrote a book called uh, our moon has blood cloud. That's a very hard headline. How did Shikara title happen? Well, the I must make it clear that the film is not based on my book. Uh, the book came out a few years back. Uh, but the the script of the film is completely different. We know that I started working on it uh, along with Abhijat Joshi um, many, many years ago. Uh, it is a labor of love, like Vinod keeps on saying. It took us several years to uh, get the draft correct, but uh, we wanted this film uh, to be a real depiction of what happened to Kashmiri Pandits in 1989-90. Mm. Um, and I think uh, the film has come out well, and uh, we are eagerly uh, looking forward to uh, the audience reaction now. But don't you think it has been a long year? I mean, 30, 30 years, it's so much. It's, the subject is very sensitive, very painful. Why it took almost 30 years for a filmmaker to come up with this story? It is surprising. Uh, you know, we, we think a lot about it. Um, I think what happened in the initial years of exile is that uh, for the media, uh, for, for the intellectuals of this country, the main story always remained in Kashmir Valley. Uh, this is where guns were, uh, you know, there was a sense of romanticism attached to the idea of gun, uh, where a group of men, uh, you know, was fighting uh, Indian security forces. Mm -hmm. So all media, national or international, went to Kashmir. Mm -hmm. uh, in the process, the story of Kashmiri Pandits got forgotten. It was not even relegated to the margins. Mm -hmm. Many films, as you know, have been made on Kashmir. Uh, but they hardly make any 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 mention of Kashmiri yeah. Pandits. Uh, it is very surprising. But I hoping I'm, I'm hoping now that you know after 30 years, um, the film has uh, come out and uh, it will finally do justice to our story. You said the uh, Hindi films don't mention the story of Kashmiri Pandit, and it's very surprising. Why do you think this? Like I said, you know, the for the media, the Kashmir story has always remained a black and white story. Uh, here's a set of people uh, who got so-called brutalized by the Indian state, but uh, the media forgets that uh, it's the same group of people who also brutalized another set of people who happen to be Kashmiri Pandits in this case. Uh, the entire uh, romanticism happened there. You know, it was somehow uh, always fashionable to uh, talk, talk about only one side of the story. Uh, the the minority in uh, in in Kashmir Valley, uh, and you know, the intellectuals, the civil civil liberties, uh, civil liberties wala only always talk about the rights of minorities. But when it, when it came to Kashmir, mm -hmm. uh, they remained absolutely silent. And I keep on saying sometimes, sometimes this silence, you know, mm -hmm. um, is very painful for us, even uh, more than the mm -hmm. exodus itself. You talked about the silence. Is it is it true that people try to avoid the mention of Kashmiri Pandit or they don't talk about the issue of Kashmiri Pandits because of the fear of losing their secular credential or being labeled as communal? Is it the case? I think that's unfortunate, right? You know, you, if you happen to look at any narrative in this country, there's always mention of 1992, there's always mention of 1993, there's always mention of 2002. But in the process, you know, the 1990 somehow gets skipped. Mm -hmm. I've never understood why. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, that's a question we must now begin to ask, mm -hmm. uh, you know, senior journalists, academics, intellectuals in this country mm -hmm. as to why they have never uh, you know, raise the issue of Kashmiri Pandas because even the uh, film industry looks very divided. I mean, uh, beside Anupam Khera, I have not seen anyone speaking openly. I think, I, I think honestly, there's also ignorance on this part. You know, uh, even 30 years later, I'm sometimes sometimes very surprised when I speak at public forums. You know, I was at the Jaipur Literature Literature Festival just a couple of days ago, and I, I had a session with uh, with Vino Chopra. It was a Shikara panel. I was surprised. So many people, even now after 30 years of exodus, still come to me. My book has been out for seven years yeah. now, as we know. Yeah. But still people come to me. You know, there were two women from Hyderabad who came and they said, uh, you know, we just happen to know about this in passing. We had absolutely no idea 
uh, especially about the magnitude of mm -hmm. the exodus and the tragedy that befell uh, 400,000 people mm -hmm. in 1990. Raul, you were 14 years when this exodus happened. What What is your memory of Kashmir? How, uh, do you often go, go to Kashmir and how is the situation? The memory of Kashmir is very stark. Um, uh, you know, uh, it, during the preview of uh, uh, the film Shikara in Delhi on 19 January, which also marks the 30th anniversary of our, our exodus from uh, from from Kashmir Valley. I was narrating an incident when I was leaving with my uh, family on the morning of 4th April 1990 uh, and on the national highway, on the Srinagar Jammu National Highway in South Kashmir, uh, our cab was had stopped and we saw this man coming from the other side. Um, he was a Kashmiri Muslim and he was pushing a wheelbarrow um, and he looked at us and he knew we were Kashmiri Pandits who were fleeing Kashmir um, and he just raised his fist in a very menacing manner um, and he said in Kashmiri, he said, Mariu Bato Mariu, which means mean? die Pandits die. Right. Uh, so I said on the preview of Shikara that uh, I don't know where that man to is today mm -hmm. but I wanted to tell him that uh, we have survived. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the unfortunate part in this whole scenario is that while some of us have survived, many of us have not. The official killing of Kashmiri Pandits by uh, terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir uh, is about 700. But I say uh, the number of people who got killed were in tens of thousands. Because in the first few years of exile, so many elderly people I know, or many of us know, uh, died of snake uh, bites, sunstroke, uh, depression. So that all murder or is on Islamist extremism in Kashmir Valley in 1990. How much do you think the government, successive government, both in center and also in Jammu and Kashmir, have failed in uh, you know solving this issue? The Indian state began to be absent from our lives from the night of 19th January mm -hmm. 1990, mm -hmm. uh, when hundreds of thousands of people across Kashmir Valley assembled in mosques mm -hmm. and they began to shout anti-India slogans and anti-Kashmiri Pandit slogans. Mm -hmm. So from that day, I say that the, the state has been completely missing. As you know, the Kashmiri Pandit uh, issue has been in the manifest to political parties like the BJP, etc. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, may it be Congress or the BJP or any other government uh, which has come to power in the last 30 years, it has merely remained a lip service. Uh, absolutely nothing has been done to ensure uh, that we get justice, number one, or there is any effort uh, to ensure our safe return to Kashmir Valley. But, you know, re recently what the, the series of decisions that the government has taken, be it Article 370 or the clampdown in Kashmir, how do you see this? How is that is that a solution for the return of Kashmiri Pandits? See, many, uh, many Kashmiri Pandits see this as a first step. Uh, the abrogation of Article 370 as the first step. What is your uh, take on Article 370? See, I say, you know, as a journalist or as a Kashmir watcher, I say that the Article 370 or as a Kashmiri even, because I also have a stake in the story of Kashmir, right? I say that the Article 370 has been uh, in service in Kashmir Valley for 70 years. What has it done for the Kashmiris? Any Kashmiri, irrespective of their religion. Mm -hmm. What has it done for Kashmiri Muslims? What has it done for Kashmiri Pandits? Did the Article 370 ensure that the Pandits do not leave in 1990? Or they do not get died? Uh, has the Article 370 ensured that terrorists do not, do not come in the house of ordinary Kashmiri Muslims and they don't get died? Has uh, Article 370 ensured that there is any kind of industry, any kind of business, any kind of um, solution uh, to Kashmir problem for the last 70 years. It has not. Now, we do not know how this will play out, but at least, you know, we should we should give it a chance. And in my personal opinion, uh, there's been a lot of schizophrenia about uh, in the minds of ordinary Kashmiris who continue to live in uh, uh, Kashmir Valley uh, because this soft sessionism which has been allowed in Kashmir for the last 70 years, um, where New Delhi has ensured that the main political leadership in Kashmir, no matter who they are, speaks one language in New Delhi and speaks completely different language in Kashmir. One hopes that with the abrogation of Article 370, uh, if we keep the internet clamp down, which I do not support at all, uh, on, on one side, but at least, you know, there is some, there is some political moment, momentum and, and there is a, there's a sense of finality in the minds of ordinary Kashmir mm -hmm. that their future lies with the idea of India. Okay, one more question, uh, Rahul. Suppose <clears throat> in this current political climate, you know, uh, now people on social media have started talking more about Kashmiri Pandit. I'm talking about the right-wing trolls. I mean, they sometimes kind to justify the attack 
on Muslims across the country by speaking about the Kashmiri Pandits. How do you see this? Is this justified? I have always, always criticized it. Uh, I have always said uh, that do not militarize our, our tragedy. Mm -hmm. uh, to perpetrate violence upon other communities in in in, the, in this country, um, we do not want to belittle the struggles of any other community uh, in, in this country. But to a very large extent, it is also media creation. Um, many Kashmir, you know, when the article uh, 370 was abrogated, the first visuals of most of the TV channel showed was a few Kashmiri pundits mm -hmm. celebrating. Mm -hmm. Now, that celebration is not revenge. That celebration as, you know, as Kashmiris who have a stake in Kashmir, they might be happy about the abrogation of article 370, but they're not happy if an ordinary Kashmiri Muslim dies in Kashmir. And I must tell you that beyond TV channels and media, uh, personal relationships between between Kashmiri Muslims and Kashmiri Hindus are intact. Uh, in fact, when you go to any Kashmiri Pandit wedding in Delhi or in Jammu especially, there's not even a single marriage uh, where a Kashmiri Muslim singer or a, or a dance troupe is not performing. Mm -hmm. So those personal relationships are uh, intact. What we have failed is uh, as, as community, you know, because uh, the main grudge of Kashmiri Pandits is that uh, even after 30 years, most of the Kashmiri Muslims in Valley are in absolute denial about the circumstances that led to our exodus. So we say that, you know, 30 years have passed, but at least acknowledge our pain now. Exactly. Tell, you know, say that, you know, Vinod used a word that he, he said, you know, now is the time for the rest of India or the Kashmiri Muslim to say, sorry, Kashmiri Pandits. We are not holding people who were born after 1990, you know, the youngsters of this country responsible for what happened to us. But at least they should read about the tragedy. There should be some sort of empathy. Only from this empathy will real recognition reconciliation flow. You said, uh, you said, uh, we, know, we know they actually asked to say sorry to the Kashmiri Pandits, but he also mentioned in a recent interview that the story of Kashmiri Pandits and the Muslims are like two brothers have fallen apart. And this statement was brutally trolled. And yeah, you know, yeah. your uh, boycott Shikara started trending on Twitter, Twitter, social media and all. Do you think film industry is a soft target for the trolls? See, Vinod and I are absolutely clear about what this film is about. This film, for the first time in 30 years, shows clearly what happened to Kashmiri Pandits. So there is no compromise on the story of Kashmiri Pandits. I think Vinod was misquoted. He did not mean that there, uh, you know, it's a little fallout, as he said, between a victim and a terrorist. There cannot be any reconciliation between a victim and a terrorist. But definitely there can be reconciliation between a victim, Kashmiri Pandit victim, and a Kashmiri Muslim who did not do enough or remain silent uh, when violence was perpetrated on this Kashmiri Pandit. So there is a there is a real chance, you know, that no, not all Kashmiri Muslims are responsible for what happened to Kashmiri Pandits. So if there is empathy from the other side, like Vinod said, if there is an acknowledgement of our pain, then ordinary Kashmiri Pandits and Muslims, uh, even, uh, you know, in, uh, Muslims who had no role to uh, uh, play in this, will come together and then the the real reconciliation will flow from there. But in absolutely no uncertain terms would I reiterate that no reconciliation is possible between a Kashmiri Pandit victim and a terrorist like Yasin Malik or Bitta Karate. Okay. Last question. What do you see the future of Kashmiri Pandits? I think, I think the Kashmiri Pandits are hopeful. Will they return? Uh, I think they should. Uh, it is up to the government to, to create uh, conditions uh, for that. Um, but having said that, you know, I, I've always felt that the government can only, go, any government mm -hmm. can go to only one one extent. Mm -hmm. uh, real reconciliation, real return will only happen when there is an acknowledgement of our pain in Kashmir Valley mm -hmm. and people to people contact happens. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many youngsters uh, you know, I visit um, uh, Kashmir frequently for professional reasons. I'm a journalist, so I visit there every two, three months. Sometimes I'm surprised, you know, there's so many youngsters who were born after 1990. They have absolutely no idea how it was to live in a, live in a, live in a Kashmir, like in a pre-1989 Kashmir, where Kashmiri Muslims and Kashmiri Pandits live together. There were absolutely problems even then. But the problems were not as much as 
the problems that got created after 1990. Uh, so once that reconciliation happens, uh, only then will be there any forward movement of the return of Kashmiri Pandits. Let's see how things uh, materialized. Well, Raul, well, thanks for talking with us. Okay, and all the best for your movie. Thank okay, you. That's all for now. For more news and update, keep logging on to nnsbus.com.